Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to learn how to play Cochise by uh, Audio Slave. So Tom Morello's got some really fun riffs to play in this one. Um, so I've got kind of a tone that's, uh, you know, he doesn't use a lot of distortion. So I'm trying to not oversaturate it, but still make it sound, you know, pretty thick. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to start here. We're in standard tuning here. Now, the beginning of the song has this kind of helicopter effect that he does. Now, I'll show you. Now, by, you know, watching interviews with him, he actually says that he created it in the studio by using some delay and, um, you know, kind of rocking the whammy pedal back and forth and actually taking a pencil and just going across the strings, just da 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 da, -da you know, just kind of rotating the pencil back and forth across the strings. Live, how he does it is he does he mutes the strings down here, and he'll he holds his pick between these two. So with these three fingers, he's smacking the strings. Now there's another hit between each one of those. He has a really short, really fast, quick little slap back delay. So you hear twice as many hits as this. And while he's doing that, he does he rocks kind of the whammy pedal backwards and forward to kind of give it this kind of oscillating effect. Now you can kind of recreate this without having that delay. I like to just, you know, I kind of move the you know, pick to my middle finger and use my thumb and my pinky coming down. Um, so if you want to do it with no effects, just kind of, kind of rotate back and forth. And, uh, you know, if you have a whammy pedal, you can kind of rock that back and forth. Um, so it's kind of changing the pitch of it, or, or you can kind of maybe even use a wah pedal just to give it kind of seem like it's coming, kind of coming in and out. All right, so that's a way that he can kind of uh, do that studio effect really on, on stage and make it sound just like it really. Then from there, there's a lot of noise that comes in, and there's a thing that he does live that isn't really on the recording. Uh, but he does it every time live, so we'll do that. So coming out of that, he just hits a low E power chord. Let that ring out, just kind of create some noise. And then he goes up and does some octaves and something like this. And, and he actually takes a whammy pedal and takes that up and an octave as well when he gets up to that high little octaves thing. So we have the seventh fret octave off the seventh. I'll just show you what he does live here to kind of build up to the main riff. So the low E string open, and we ha have the seventh fret on the A, ninth fret there on the G string. You're gonna mute that D string, and then move up the eleventh, the ninth fret now with that octave. Then ten, twelve. Those are play it half the amount of time and then way up here 17 uh, the 19th frets are all right so that just gives you something to do there in the intro like what he does live and then we have this main riff So um, that starts with a hammer on between five and seven on the A. And then play five uh, on the A to seven on the low E twice. So we have this. And then we have three on the low E string. Then back to the hammer on. This time we go straight through the notes five on the A string, seven on the low E, three. So we have this. And then you just repeat that. Now, 
where he's kind of uh, at the end of the riff where it's kind of go around to play the whole thing again. Sometimes I'll hang out. Just kind of on this chord, what he does a lot live is just kind of, you got to stop the riff at the very end when it starts repeating. Just hold the low E open with the fifth fret there on the um, uh, A string. And the bass player continues to go, so it kind of doesn't really matter. You can continue playing the riff if you want to. <laughs> Right, then we have a transition two chords which would be the pre-chorus which takes us into the chorus this is now that's a power chord off the fifth fret of the a string and the seventh fret there on the d but you're going to add the fifth fret of the low e string in there as well it kind of makes this the it sound like it's almost on a seventh string and then all right so five and take that up a half step all right, and then we have the chorus. All right, so that is going to be hammering. You're going to play, first of all, that fret there on the uh, A string, hammering on the 7th fret there on the A. Do that twice. And then, then 5, 3, 0 on the low, string, low E string. And then we have kind of a cool little feel. Play that 3 twice to 5. And then you're going to jump up back to the beginning of the riff by playing real quick two on the uh, A string and the open D. So we have this. quick little guitar solo really easy one he kicks in a little bit of delay and he plays this so that's at the second fret there on the G string and you just kind of tremolo pick up which means just kind of no you don't like to pick it that fast it's, it's but as fast as you go, it's down up on that G string. Slowly bend up that second fret. Release it. And then do the bend again. And then take it up an octave to the 14th fret on the G string and do the... And you just do a, a quicker series of bends. All right, pretty easy stuff. And then we're back to the same verse and chorus riffs that we just played. Um, then we get to the bridge section. Now the bridge section, uh, I believe uses a, 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 on the recording at least, I don't know if he does it live because he doesn't mention doing it live, um, but he does play, uh, it sounds like there's a whammy pedal kind of go, he's kind of rocking it back and forth a little bit. Um, but the actual notes that he's playing on the guitar while he's doing that is uh, pretty simple. <laughs> So that's pretty easy, uh, but like I said, it's probably got a wedding pedal rocking it down an octave whenever he goes to the lowest note. And it sounds like it's kind of um, coming in and out there. So we have the seventh fret there. I'm sorry, the ninth fret on the D string, and then the octave underneath that, the seventh fret on the low E string. So we have this. Do that again. Just repeat that. Did you 
use your third finger there if you want. And then seventh on the A string to its octave underneath the low E string. There's some effects on here besides the line. And at the end of that, we go to this D5 power chord um, with the A string in the bass as well. So that's the um, third fret on the B, second fret on the G, and then the open D and A string. And then we go to kind of an unaccompanied uh, version of the um, chorus riff, which looks like this. <laughs> So that's just the power chord there at the 7th fret of the A string, 9th fret there on the D. Low E open. Then that same 5-3-0. Same. Same ending as the, as the regular chorus, but you're just kind of starting it instead of doing this. You're kind of just hitting the power chord. Chorus comes in, he starts to the same way he did earlier. And at the very end of the song, you're just gonna hit that E5 chord twice with the low E string in there. Alright, so pretty simple, uh, but still still really fun to play, especially when the those the uh, verse and the chorus riffs that move around a lot. It's pretty fun to play. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.